Good afternoon and welcome to the RO Sports Show College Football Frenzy. I am your host, Matt Harrelson, and we're being joined here on College Football Frenzy by two-time national champion and Clemson offensive lineman Sean Pollard. So, Sean, we really appreciate you taking out some time for us here. Thank you for having me. So, like I said, this is your second national championship, your first coming as a true freshman. What are some of the differences you've noticed uh, from then till now yourself as a player uh, and as a team as a whole? Um, for me personally, I, the stage wasn't as overwhelming as it was the first time. I mean, the first time was bright lights. You're just overcoming nerves and you're just scared about what was going to happen. And this time, just, there's more calm. Um, and our team is more ready, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. and I, I think just from last year, we were focused from the start after we had finished uh, last year the way we wanted to. Right. So in a, in a way, this was kind of um, a revenge tour, if you will. Is that fair to say? <laughs> I'd rather say redemption rather than okay. revenge. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, but it definitely showed in the score uh, that you guys were focused. So we talked to you before the season started, and uh, we were talking to you about some of the goals that the team had. For the upcoming season now obviously winning a national championship has to be on the top of that list but what other goals did you uh yourself and the team have this season besides that and were you guys able to meet all those i mean well, our team goals are win the opener win the division win the conference and win the closer we actually don't have the national championship on the list of team goals okay we know if we hit all those goals it's more than likely that we're in the national championship and we're gonna we're gonna try to win it. But um, just we were able to hit all the goals this year and, and we were able to succeed and God was willing to let us succeed. So it was nice for us to be back on top. So leading up to the national championship, there were some terms that were being thrown out uh, for Alabama and for Clemson, such as Alabama being a uh, football factory, if you will, and Clemson more of a football family. So talk a minute about the culture at Clemson uh, that Dabo Sweeney's put in place regarding that kind of family feel to it. Yeah, it's just, it is just like a big family. All the coaches look out for us like we're their sons, and we all build relationships with coaches and their families. Um, I can tell you uh, there's a lot of times when we walk into family dinner we literally will go and just start playing with the little kids that all the coaches have. So it's just that aspect, and it's just an open atmosphere and all that. So, uh, Sean, are you, will you be graduating this year? I graduate in December. In December, okay. So leaving the, the program here, um, what do you see for the future for the Tigers looking forward? Um, just another reload. I mean, we're getting some, some of the best athletes out there, and if they're willing to buy in, to the program and by to what the culture has been built. I don't see Clemson going anywhere anytime soon. No, I think that's fair to say. Uh, what about yourself, though, Sean? You got any future football plans? I'm hoping pros will work out, but uh, we're going to have a really good season this year. Put it all on the table for them and see what their NFL decides if I'm good enough or not. But then after that, I don't know. I have a few options of mine. I'm not really too sure. So when would you start training for, for the draft, potentially, or have you already started? No, I have. I'm playing this year in college, so I won't. Okay, gotcha. After, this, after I graduate, whenever our final game is, um, whatever um, it's decided, I need to start training. I'll start training for pro day and all that. All right, sounds good. And Sean, my last question for you: Everybody wants to know how was that fast food buffet at the White House on Monday? <laughs> uh, it was interesting, to say the least. Um, uh, we're all really appreciative. Appreciate, like, appreciative that he, was, he actually went out on his dime and bought the food for us. Um, I don't really tend to eat fast food, but I was hungry. It was there, <laughs> so I ate it. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Well, Sean, we really appreciate, again, taking some time out with us. Congratulations on your second national championship. And, uh, yeah, we'll hope to see you again in the uh, Clemson Orange and Purple. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we've got plenty more from the RO Sports Show College Football Frenzy. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. 
To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. I'm Joey Bennett, Director of Call Auditorium, and this is Emily Tucker from the Richmond County Chamber of Commerce, and we're here in the Call Auditorium. We've got a whole new series of shows we're announcing for 2019, and we're very excited about who we're bringing to Richmond County. So, Joey, what do I have to look forward to? We have three fabulous shows that we're so excited about that are going to be right here at Call Auditorium. Scotty McCreary, Craig Morgan, and Hotel California. And where do I go to find these tickets? You call us here at the box office, 910-410-1691, or come by and see us. Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts is all about rustic home decor and gifts. You will always find a variety of unique antiques, vintage, and new items in our shop. Come and see our selection of housewarming, new baby, and wedding gifts. For the man in your life, we have many collectibles, boker knives, and leather. And ladies love the jewelry, purses, candles, hats, and t-shirts. We also offer a 30-day layaway program. Come and experience shopping at Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts. And welcome back to the RO Sports Show's College Football Frenzy. Uh, Matt Harrelson still here with you. Brandfall, Russell Parker. And again, want to thank uh, Clemson offensive lineman Sean Pollard for giving us that interview earlier. And you know, it's really cool to talk to somebody that just won a national championship, yeah. much less the second national That's championship. Cool. Wow. That is cool. And just visited the White House. I yeah, mean, and cool. yeah. so I had to ask him, because everybody's been talking about this uh, Wendy's, Burger King, yeah. McDonald's, and pizza buffet yeah. That's right. that uh, President Trump and the White House uh, set up for him. He actually told me that he doesn't eat any fast food, but he said I was hungry and it was there in front of me, yeah, so I ate it. Right. And I said, "Good enough Personally, for me." Personally, I would have loved that meal. Um, so. That would have been awesome. <laughs> who, who, how many people can say they've had a Big Mac in the White House? Uh, not many. <laughs> so. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't even know so. if you could Google that. So. Uh, but anyway, the uh, regular season is over. Of course, we we've already covered uh, how it ended yeah. and how did it end, Russell? Clemson national champions. Forty-four to sixteen, and yet you're still wearing that shirt. It ain't going away. Yeah, we're not going away. No, you're not going away. Uh, but you know who is going away are a lot of quarterbacks on the That's college right. football level, moving here, moving there. Yeah. So let's start with uh, an Alabama quarterback, Jalen Hurts, one of the big names, finally going to transfer, and we found out this week. He's headed to Oklahoma. So what are your first uh, thoughts about this? Well, when I first heard that he went into the transfer portal, I told myself, as a Bama fan, I was like, you know, wherever he goes, I'll be I'll be a fan of that team for just that one season. Just that one season. That doesn't make any sense to me, but go ahead. Because I value the res the respect that he has for his team and you know everything that he's done there. And you know, he stayed the whole season. He could have left earlier. So what? He he's a team player, and I respect that. So You know what I compare this to, Brandon? You What's can help me out right. here, and I don't want to interrupt you, okay. but I do. <laughs> Can you imagine if um, Cameron Johnson left the Tar Heels yeah. and went to Duke? Would you pull for Duke? I wouldn't pull for Duke. No. If they played Russia. That's my whole point. It's not about <laughs> the players. Right. Now, he didn't go to That's Auburn. Right. He went to Oklahoma. There's not that big of a What if he had gone one. to Auburn? Well, he didn't. So no, I'm you, about you said about wherever he went, you would be their fan Yeah, for but what if wherever. he was War Eagle now? I you wouldn't never, pull. No, you I, wouldn't, pull I would just him. hope that Hurts got touched on. That's all I hope. Right, for. Everybody right. else, they can they can squat. But anyway, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, I thought um, I think he's made the, probably the best choice out of all the three that everybody was kind of uh, looking at him going to, which was between Oklahoma, uh, Miami, and Maryland. So um, we already know that Maryland, uh, excuse me, uh, Miami's going to get a quarterback, so he wouldn't go there and. and there's really no future at Maryland, I don't think, for if you want to go into the NFL yeah, as a quarterback. I mean, Maryland, Oklahoma, that's a no-brainer. That's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And it's like Oklahoma is a championship contending uh, team, knowing that, but they also pumped out the last two Heisman Trophy winners. That's yeah. quarterback position. So uh, I think Good that's, point. that's the best bid right there. Yeah, and that's a great uh, segue here because, Brandon, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. I think, uh, in, in your opinion, does this automatically throw Jalen into the Heisman hunt for next year? Without a doubt. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, Oklahoma's like, like – Russell just said, pumped out the last two Heisman Trophy winners. Jalen Hurts is an accomplished quarterback. It's not like he's a bum coming yeah. in. I mean, 26 and 2 as a starter, yeah. All-American, played lights out when he got to play this year when they needed him. 
and just a great kid and great team player. I think yep. he, I, I think he got all the attributes you want to be a successful quarterback. Yeah. Team player yep. was the phrase yep. in my mind, and yep. I think that encompasses him yep. uh, completely. So with all of these guys moving around, we've seen kind of a domino effect, mm-hmm. if you will. Yeah. And it's kind of difficult to keep track of all of them because yes, there I are a lot. Yeah. So instead of trying to say, this guy went there, so now this guy's going to fill his spot, let's just run through these, and okay. I want to get you guys' opinion on it. Ex-Ohio State Buckeye quarterback Tate Martell, another one of these four- or five-star guys mm-hmm. that uh, Dwayne Haskins was there, mm-hmm. finds out he's not going to play. He ends up being the guy going to Miami, mm-hmm. which now he's got a new offensive coordinator, yeah. got a new coach, which means new system. So yeah. what do you guys think about this move? A good move for him. I mean, he's going to step in and compete right away. He'll probably start. Yeah. I mean, they're getting a coach from Alabama who knows that kind of a system, a, a winning championship winning system. So I think going out in Miami is going to be a great bet for him. Yeah, and that's uh, Manny Diaz, I believe, is who's going to be the head coach. I, I was getting ready to ask that. I yeah. couldn't remember who the coach was since Rick retired. And if you guys remember, we talked last week on Love It or Hate It, uh, Manny came in and then just completely fired everybody that's right, on fired the offensive, everyone offensive staff. staff. That's right. So they're literally starting yeah. from scratch. That's right. And perhaps that'll benefit everybody there mm-hmm. in Miami. Yeah. And again, they Miami the Browns when they done everything away. Yeah. Now, My, what year is Martell going in as? Do you know? I, I uh, don't. I want to say he is a. I'm not sure. Sophomore, junior. Oh yeah. So, in so there. he's got room to grow. It's not yeah. like he's stepping in, got one year to learn it and right. make a break. It's not like. Um, yeah. It's not like Jalen where this will be his only season. Actually, yeah. we'll talk about that for just real okay. quick because we do what we want here. Okay. Um, with Jalen only going to Oklahoma and only being able to play for that mm-hmm. one year, um, does that? And Kyler Murray was the same way. Mm-hmm. Does that? Can that stunt the program a little bit? Or I mean, if you've got talent, talent's talent. Well, I mean, sir, it certainly is going to be an adjustment period. But but you got spring. I mean, he's getting there early enough where he's going to be there for spring. And he's going to be there for all the workouts, so he have time to develop some timing with his receivers. I really think with the talent Oklahoma's putting around him, he'll be fine. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think uh, Jalen knows how to handle um, different classes coming in. Uh, he's been he was hard for quarterback for Alabama for a couple of years there, and uh, I think that's going to transfer well for him. And uh, yeah, transfer. Good call. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, talking about Miami, going back to that, um, I'm really not sure what happened with uh, – what was their coach? Uh, Mark Rick. Yeah. And, and I'm not really sure what happened with that. I don't mm-hmm. know if he got pushed out and called it retirement think, or, or whatever If you're going to retire, is this what the letter would look like? Yeah. If not, how you want us to write it? Yeah. But so, Miami Miami's one of those college programs that has perennially been a really good football mm-hmm. team. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, you go back to the 80s and then yeah. the 2000s oh, when yeah. they were just, you know, one of the best teams of all time, perhaps. And I know that Miami fans, alumni, are trying to get the program mm-hmm. back to that. And perhaps getting a player like Tate Martell yep. is a way to, uh, to uh, you know, get, yep. get a jump start on that. So, talking about Oklahoma, of course, Hurts is going there on the flip of that coin. Oklahoma is blocking quarterback transfer Austin Kendall from 2019 eligibility at West Virginia University. So he could still transfer and mm-hmm. very well may, mm-hmm. but they're going to make him sit out the season yeah. because they're both in the Big 12. What do you guys think about this? A little shady, isn't it? I hate it. Yeah, personally. I do too. I, I, That's yeah. dirty. And uh, I just don't really like that rule. I mean, if a quarterback thinks he, or any player for that matter, thinks they can do better somewhere else, it should not be up to another university. They should not have no control over once he leaves that program. Yep. If the co- head coach left and went to another school, they wouldn't make him sit a year. Right. Mm-hmm. And we're going to delve into that yeah. more here in just a few yeah. minutes. But let's keep moving through all yeah. these quarterbacks yeah. on the move. Uh, we talked about this before, but again, want to bring it up, former Clemson quarterback Kelly Bryant, yeah. as we know now, lost his job to Trevor yeah. Lawrence. That turned out to be a pretty good <laughs> yeah, move. Yeah, smart move. Uh, but he ends up transferring to Missouri, so going to be in the SEC. Uh, what do you guys think? The East is the weaker one of the two yeah, divisions. Correct. So I think – um, that's a good move for him. I mean, he obviously – his time was done at Clemson. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, and, I mean and so, I mean, writing was on the wall. I, I don't blame him. Go where you can play. You got four years. Go make the most of it. I think uh, Missouri hasn't really been that strong in the past couple of years. I know they had an SEC championship bid a couple of years ago when they first got into the, into the SEC, but they haven't really been there. So, maybe having him come in and – Maybe pick up the program a little bit and build up on that because now can well, happen now really well. You know, he's actually replacing a pretty good quarterback in mm-hmm. Drew Locke, who's yeah. on a lot of NFL big boards mm-hmm. now. I think he's like maybe the fifth or sixth quarterback yeah, on those lists. But uh, Bryant not replacing a scrub by any means. That's right. Now, Kelly Bryant's going to transfer to Missouri. Jalen Hurts is going to transfer to Oklahoma. It seems like they're both going yeah. to different schools at the same time. So, 
Which one was the better approach? Kelly Bryant saying, I know I lost my job, mm -hmm. I'm out of here, or Jalen Hurts saying, I know I lost my job, I'm going to stick around? I think Hurts handled it the best, I do my, in my opinion. I mean, he, he didn't. He was not a distraction, not to say that Bryant was, but Jalen Hurts did everything right, wouldn't even entertain the talk when they were making the drive for the national championship. And I love the way he kept the deten attention off himself and on his team. And he still was able to get into some plays. That's right. Uh, I just find it a little fascinating that they both went different routes and yet they both had the same, same result. That's right. So. They ended up in the same place. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Hurts ended up in a better position than Bryant did. Oh, I think so, too, yeah. team-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just talking about the actual yeah, they, protocol. They of, both got what they transfer. wanted. They just took a different route. Yep. Uh, another big name quarterback that's moving on is former Georgia quarterback Jacob Eason, yep. who a lot of people have kind of forgotten about because mm -hmm. he lost his job to Jacob Fromm mm -hmm. as another true freshman. Yep. And uh, so Eason took a year off, and he's headed to Washington to replace uh, four-year Husky starter Jake uh, Jake Brown. Excuse me. So uh, Washington's still a threat in the Pac-12, yep. right? I agree. Yeah. I agree. They, 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 you know, they got a good offense out there, yeah. and I think he'll fit right in and jump right in and start playing and contributing immediately. Yeah, Washington has won the perennial uh, uh, colleges right now in the Pac-12. I think that you know Pac-12 champions uh, is going to be in sight for them. Well, they just won it this past year, if mm -hmm. I remember yep. correctly. Right back. Yeah, um, and and now they're losing Browning, of course, and mm -hmm. and he'll replace him. They're also losing Miles Gaskin, the running back, who I feel like I've mentioned mm -hmm. a dozen stud. times He's this year. A stud. Very good, but I feel like mm -hmm. Washington with uh, Peterson there is starting yeah. to get to the point where they can kind of reload yep. instead of rebuild. So I don't think that'll be a problem for them. Now, we're talking about Ohio State earlier. Justin Fields, former Georgia quarterback. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. Like, uh, yeah. Fromm just uh -huh. took over yeah. that job, and everybody yeah. else is on the yeah. outside looking in. But Justin Fields was the number one recruit coming out of high school. Not mm -hmm. just quarterback, number mm -hmm. one recruit. Wow. Didn't have anywhere to play, so he's headed to Ohio State, and he's going to take over for Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. To me, this is similar to Hurts going to Oklahoma, where this is one of the best-case scenarios, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I so, think I think so. Um, I just don't know how he's gonna be able to handle the maybe. I don't know if the climate's going to change up anywhere from you know, playing in hot hot Georgia all up in the cold Ohio. So that might yeah, come into play. I don't really think about that. Yeah. What do you think, Brandon? I think I think he's gonna step into a beautiful situation. I mean, I, I get why these guys are moving, man. Yeah. I, I don't I don't have a problem with them moving. Yeah, and two more here that are moving. Brandon Wimbush, former Notre Dame quarterback, lost his job yep. to Ian Book and. You know, I know Notre Dame didn't show up in the playoffs, but Ian Book took them to the That's playoffs, right. had a right great season. Wimbush knew that uh -huh. his starting gig yep. was up. This one I found very interesting because he's not heading to a Power 5 team. He's heading to Central Florida. Which is So what does this unusual. say about – Central Florida now that they're able to get you know big time D one guys to come there. I think that's awesome for UCF, awesome for him, awesome for the young man because UCF is, I mean if anybody saw them play against LSU, right? They showed themselves well. They could have quit mm -hmm. in that game and they and they made a nice run at LSU. Yeah. And I think this this type of player and you know they're playing that game with their backup quarterback. So right. Quarterback's like a, a missing piece for them. Yeah. So and, I think and, it's great. And that brings up a good point. So I want to ask you, Russell. Of course, Mackenzie Milton has been dynamic for UCF. I think like their all-time leading scorer as far as points in school history. Um, so Wimbush has some big shoes to fill. But like you said, is it more beneficial to have somebody with some experience like him or try to bring the freshman in to play for three or four years? I think someone who's got that experience is going to play in a bigger role. Um, but you know, if you got some experience from that big atmosphere like you like do. Like Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're going to have uh, our stellar quarterback on your hands. And UCF is going to be another fourth to reckon with this season. Mm -hmm. yeah. they'll, they'll continue to, to mock at the cultural playoff committee again next mm -hmm. year. I hope you're right. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, one that we just found out about yesterday, Florida State quarterback James Blackman has entered the transfer portal. Uh, he lost his job, I guess, a couple years ago to DeAndre Francois. Now, Blackman hasn't mentioned where he's going yet. Mm -hmm. We don't even know that he'll technically transfer, but he has put his name in the portal. Okay. So what do you guys think about this? What is it? How many years has he got left? You know, I want to say – Rising Junior – yeah, I want to say he's probably got at least a couple years. It's just difficult to keep track yeah, of all these I guys. cannot can remember what. I yeah. Again, I don't have a problem with him doing it. And UNC still needs a quarterback. You read my mind. <laughs> I was just sitting here thinking no North Carolina. Yeah, no no, no UNC Carolina, on no. any of those. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We can they can take they'll take him at Chapel Hill. Yeah, Florida State, even though they've been a little unsuccessful the last couple of years, is still a powerhouse football team yep. when they want to be, right? 
Uh, I think even when they want to be, they just can't get there. I don't know what you four states have been up to the uh, past couple of seasons. It's like you guys beat them up and they just have been in the locker. We, we put the them time. back down, down, <laughs> down to the ground. So I, I don't know. Um, Florida State, in general, I think they might have a better season this year for sure. I think the only way they can go is up to the Oh, yeah, they're definitely better than what they were this past year. Yeah. yeah. And that'll be better for the yeah. ACC. Absolutely. As well. So let's talk about, as a whole, what we're seeing here with all these quarterbacks uh, moving. What does all of this movement at the quarterback position mean for college football? What do you guys think? There's a lot of focus on quarterbacks moving around. I'm not sure there's any other positions that are having this many or even players in general. There might be, and they're probably there just are, but on. obviously quarterback gets all the press. And I, and yeah, and I think uh, teams will definitely build around their quarterbacks. So, uh, but Oklahoma's already got a team, for example, they already got a team that they can build around easily. Already got it built around. I think Miami can probably say the same in some sense. Ohio um, State as well. Ohio State. I, I think uh, even Central Florida as well. Um, I think all these guys are going to be very well put, placed where they go to this season. Uh, fresh start works out for everybody, and I think we're going to see a lot of great action for next year. All right. I think it makes for a great college football season next year. I mean, I came from the old school where players didn't transfer. You should be loyal to your school. But that's just a bunch of hogwash, in my opinion. Yes. I mean, they let them go, and I think it's going to make it for an exciting time next year. So let's take that and segue into my okay. next question, right. and that being should players uh, be free to switch cool schools like coaches without having to sit a year out? Because to me, this yeah. just makes sense, right? Yeah. Absolutely, Absolutely they should. Yeah. Absolutely. When they got recruited – they were recruited. I know the school was the main thing, but the coach is the closer. Right. You don't think Dabo Swinney's making a difference at Clemson? Think yeah. again. I mean, if Dabo Swinney quits tomorrow, some of those players are not going to want to be there. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And so they, I think if he leaves, the player should have the freedom to, to go to another school. What do you think, Russell? I 100% agree with that statement. College football. College basketball, too. But college football is a business. That's right. And I think every year we – and the general public is becoming more and more aware of that, mm -hmm. that it is a business. That's right. With that being said, take um, Cliff Kingsbury, for instance. Mm -hmm. Good example. Was Texas Tech's head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, December 4th, signed on as offensive coordinator at USC. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, goes to Arizona That's to take right. the Cardinals job. Now, I know that was an NFL job, but if coaches are able to move freely like that, yeah. I think it's only right that the players should. Because yeah, like you said – if I'm being recruited by Mac Brown at yep. Carolina, that's right, and I'm coming there because Mac Brown is the mm -hmm. coach, yep. and I sign my national letter of intent, and then he leaves, mm -hmm. now I'm stuck at a that's program right. that I don't want to be at anymore, and that's I feel right. like the players should be able to have the flexibility to make a decision and say uh, he left, I should be able to leave and go wherever I want. Yeah, I agree. And that's I kinda... think I think we're going to see more and more players fighting this, mm -hmm. don't you think? Yeah, and I, I think eventually that will be the norm. Yeah. Is, is that will be allowed, and, and as it should be. And, and, you know, saying it's on the business standpoint, you know, the, it's the colleges that are really making it more of the business part for them because, you know, they want to keep these players to – they're going to make them the most money, and that's kind of what it comes down to for the colleges. Coaches, they can go, but the players are brought to also build up the team as well. So Let me ask you guys this. Let's say that they do away with these transfer rules and any player can leave at any time – or you have to play a season, mm -hmm. and then you can leave in the off season. Does that open up the, the Pandora's box to where there could be some corruption in there where maybe it turns into a pay-to-play kind of thing? Because there were some rumors out there that, that Cam Newton's dad uh -huh. did the same thing, yeah. and Auburn paid the most, and yeah. he ended up playing at Auburn after yeah. he got kicked out of Florida. That's a great question. And, and you know, you always run that risk. So I really don't know. I, I, that's a great question. I, I think, it, you know, yes, I think it would co create some of that. I mean, yes. look, whether the NCAA will admit it or not, and they don't, mm -hmm. players get paid in college football every year, yeah. don't they? Oh, yeah. So I think maybe I'm not condoning that necessarily, but – I don't think it's well, really you didn't say it was right. You said it's real, it, 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 but it happens. Anybody Absolutely. says it doesn't has got blinders on. What's your opinion, Russell? I think you know if the if the games are being played dirty behind the closed doors anyway. Anyway, what's the difference if it's going to be open to that? You know, that's, yeah. I, I don't really see a big difference in the in the change if they did. So let's move on. Last question here, talking about college football okay. quarterbacks. We've seen this thing start to pop up of players sitting out bowl games to prepare for the mm -hmm. NFL draft. Yeah. Now, Brand, I think you and I agreed that initially we weren't big fans of it, mm -hmm. but now yeah. I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm starting yeah. to change yeah. my tune yeah. on that. Now, to take that one step further, we saw Ohio State defensive end Nick Bosa 
got hurt, actually sat out half the season on purpose, even mm-hmm. though he could have come back, mm-hmm. to heal up and to get ready for the draft. Mm-hmm. So let me throw this scenario out there because this is something that's been floated uh, in the media. Should Clemson quarterback Trevor Lawrence, even as a true freshman, sit out the next two years to get ready for the NFL draft so he doesn't get hurt and, and lose millions of dollars? Absolutely Go. not. That is just <laughs> barbaric. I mean, yeah. two years of sitting out means two years of you not getting any play time, two years of you not. Well, he'd be training. I'm sure he'd be. Training is different from playing in the big games, so though. If you're true. not playing those big games, yeah. you're not going to get that experience of when it is. Yes, he's already won a national championship. Yes, he's won all those big games, but he needs to continue to have that mentality of every single game going in there and playing you know, to the best of his abilities because if you sit out for two years, you might as well say you're benched for two years in the NFL. I mean, I think your stock will even drop if you stay out for two years because, yeah, you're healthy, but have you lost your step? I think you'll regress. I agree, Russell. I think, I think, I think if you sit for two years at that, at that age, I mean, as great as he was, he's still 18. And it builds up this little – I guess like <laughs> – I don't know how what to say, but it kind of builds up like this. I mean, tell you, yeah, I'm the best. I ain't got to do nothing. Uh, and, and that's not going to help out I when don't you get – Overconfidence is not going to help that. I don't know that players would necessarily look at that, that way because, like I said, mm-hmm. players are starting to realize that it is a business. This mm-hmm. is part of that. Yeah. So I'm going to play devil's advocate okay. with, with it here. Right now, Trevor Lawrence's stock couldn't be any higher, could it? I, I agree. Even yeah. as an 18-year-old oh, yeah. true if he, freshman. If he, if he could – by the rules come out this year, he would be top five pick. Yeah, he'd been the top quarterback, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. think. So with that being said, mm-hmm. obviously I don't hope this happens, but what he comes out next year, tears his ACL, and his career's done. Well, now he's missing out on $30, $40 million. I mean, that is a lot of money. And when it comes down to it, you, you whether you agree with it or not, you at least have to stop and think about it, right? Mm-hmm. You have to entertain the idea, don't you? Just because there's talking about so much money on, on, on the table. Yeah. I, I get that point. I do. I really do get that point. I just don't know at 18 if he's ready enough for the NFL where sitting two years won't hurt him where he loses that money anyway. No. I, I just I – I, I, Who knows? I, 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 I just know. feel like yeah. – I feel like Trevor Lawrence is a once-in-a-generation talent. I know that, that term gets thrown out a lot, perhaps he's too pretty, much. He's pretty special. But, I mean, he's like 6'6", 220. Yeah. I don't know if he's that big. But he's, he's a big guy. Yeah. He's obviously got a cannon for an arm. Mm-hmm. He's smart. He know he can learn the system. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, what's the downfall here? Yeah. Right now he's a freshman. So going into next season will be a sophomore – we don't know how he's going to react as a, as a long-term program goes along. And, you know, NFL will want somebody to be long-term. And, uh, you know, and going back to what you said about possibly tearing his ACL, that's the risk you play when you play football. That is your risk when you go out there. Um, anything out there is always going to have a risk where you can't go back and play or go back and work. So I think he needs to understand that he has risks. But he needs to, you know, go out there and prove that he's not afraid to take those hits so or something like that. You know, were you okay with guys sitting out bowl games to prepare? Not really, no. So you're not even on board with that. I don't. Th- I don't oh, really agree. Okay, with well, that. that takes away the rest of my argument. I understand <laughs> if you did, but at the same time, I don't agree with it. All right. Uh, I just think it's it's interesting. Yeah, it, it, it's a very valid question. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I just I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. Yeah. So, talking about the Clemson Tigers, of course, mm-hmm. winning the national championship, they finished the season uh, number one, undefeated. Which made you finish number one. Only undefeated team in the country at 15-0, <laughs> and 0, and you are correct. <laughs> I wasn't even going to bring it up because I brought it up last <laughs> week. But, yes, champ over here. I have no trophy. Uh, yeah, you gave me – I knew that was going to happen. Yes. <laughs> that bag. Uh, so, let me run through the top ten teams uh, now that we're done with bowl season. So, Clemson, obviously, number one. Alabama coming in at number two, 14-1 overall. Ohio State, number three, even though they missed the college football playoff. Any okay. uh, thoughts on that real quick? Well, I, I think it's a pretty good, ac- pretty accurate ranking. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. What did you say again? Cause I was still thinking about the thumbs up. So, who, what team? What team? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so number four Get back is to sleep, Russ. <laughs> number four is Oklahoma. They finished 12 and two. Number five, Notre Dame, after getting thumped, fell all the way back to fifth, even though they're 12 and one. Um, 
Got a 12 and two team ahead of them though. Oklahoma lost as well, not as not as bad. But uh, what do you think about Notre Dame dropping that far with only one loss? I think Oklahoma's better than Notre Dame at least by the final by the results of the games in the final four. Yeah. I, I agree with that. And you know, Notre Dame, yeah, they went all the way on the feet up until that point. Uh, but you should not be playing a national sh- or any championship type of game like that where you're getting blown out and you've been undefeated. I, I just, I think that was just an embarrassment. I think game. five's about right. I mean, that's not a yeah. nod to say they're number five. I, yeah. that's, that's still a good ranking. Six, seven, eight, and nine. We've got a uh, a, a few three-loss teams here okay. in the order of LSU, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. So a bunch of blue bloods that's as far right. as uh, college football is yep. concerned and noticing a little SEC, SEC. bias there. Wow. All three of them ahead of Texas, <laughs> okay. even though they've all got the same record. I wrote 10-4 and four here. I think that's wrong. Um what do you think? I've been saying all year that LSU was too high, Florida was too high, and here they are, both ahead of Georgia as well. Yeah, yeah I think uh, LSU you – know, LSU, uh, they, I say they got a quality win in their bowl game, which was against UCF, an undefeated team. So, uh, I think uh, that, that's okay with LSU. Florida, I mean, they blew LSU out. LSU lost to Florida, though, and they're ahead of them. Central Florida. We're not on that yet. But I'm saying they, they won that game, so that's why I agree that they should be up as ah, high as they I are. I got you. And beating UCF. Yeah. I got you. Um. Now, as far as Florida goes, now they did stomp the mess out of Michigan. So, yeah. I think that isn't a good argument for his final rankings. Um, what do you think about Texas? Are they finally back? They're number nine finishing the season. And have a pretty good quarterback of their own in Sam Ellinger. I mean, they pretty much took Georgia to the town in the that, in that Sugar Bowl. Uh, well, I don't think Georgia even wanted Georgia, to be I, there. I, I, Georgia was partying. Too. So, with that being yeah. said, this is interesting. Mm-hmm. How come Texas isn't ahead of Georgia? I agree. I mean, they that, beat them head that, to head. That's a little bit of the SEC bias coming in. Thank you. Now, the other ones the other ones I can see to yeah. a degree because um, Florida – But that's uh, head to head. That, 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 I mean, that, less than that, a month ago. Absolutely, Texas should have been ahead of Georgia. But now, what's, I mean, the, what's Texas' record? It says I wrote ten and four, but I don't think that's right. I think they finished ten and three, but I could be wrong. And, on that. and, I, and I'm not hundred percent sold that Texas is back. Yeah. I think I think they're on the right track, but you can't argue with head to head in a bowl game. Exactly. I mean, even if they mean, are ten and four, that's right. They beat no, Georgia. That's right. At the end of the day, the last game and the biggest game you had the yeah. season, Texas waxed them. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then finally, rounding out the top ten, representing the Pac-12 was Washington State. They finished eleven and two, and I've been on their bandwagon all season long. Talking about guys transferring, I didn't realize their quarterback, Gardner Minshew, mm-hmm. played at ECU. Did you know this? I did not. No, I had no clue. <laughs> and he ended up throwing for almost 4,000 yards. Obviously, season. he didn't play. That's why so nobody knew him. They let him slip exactly. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it or, worked, out, worked out well for ECU this year. Well, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> or it could be that air raid system that Mike Leach has where everybody that plays in it seems to do well. Mm. Maybe it's a mixture of the two. Could I don't be. know. Well, I'm hope, hopefully ECU can get back on track with their new, quarter, uh, new head coach because last one was um, – we will see. Mm. So here's some notables <laughs> that I wrote down. UCF finished number 11 at 12-1. and one. So you, you have that one loss, and they automatically knock them out of the top I 10, know, which we knew would happen. Yeah. We yeah. knew that would happen. But, but it shouldn't have happened. That's a slap in the face is what that yeah. is, in my opinion. Yeah, because um, I know they lost to LSU, but it wasn't a blowout. They, compete, they competed in that game with a backup quarterback. Yeah. With a backup exactly. quarterback. Exactly. A- um, another notable that I wrote down, Kentucky. Finished number 12. They had a 10-win season. What do you think about Kentucky? I'd love to see yes. that. I was born in Kentucky, so go Wildcats. There you go. So, I'll, I'll love to see them back. I was happy to see the basketball team. Back, you know, back, in, back in Plaza, they were ever there. So, I'm glad That's to true. <laughs> yeah. so, so. Let me ask you a question, and this may be uh, hyperbole, but Kentucky's in the east of the SEC, so is Georgia. Can Kentucky compete with Georgia potentially in the next couple of years? Uh, Benny Snell, their, quarter, their running back is really good. He's gone, so that's going to play a factor. I, yeah. I, I'll believe it when I see it. We'll just see. I mean, you know, got to prove it, right? Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, mean, how they recruit. I mean, that's a big factor. Yeah. I mean, they're not to the pr- point where a lot of these other programs are, where, you t- where the word you use is reload, which is a great word. They're, they're certainly not at the reload phase. No. So, I mean, recruiting is going to be big for them. What do you think? Because I know you've been on talking about George is going to win a national championship in the next four years now. Yeah, I think uh, Kentucky, you know, they surprised me this season. So, I'm not sure what I'm really – I'm not really expecting them to do – they might do as good as they did this season next year. Uh, and then the uh, another notable I had here, number 14, Michigan. Now, they had a 10-win season but finished 10-3, and three, and they were up towards the top five for a majority yeah. of the season and dropped all the way to 14th. Yeah. Harbaugh, is he gone? Is he staying? What do you guys think? He's staying. He, he's there. I, I mean, his 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 act sells well in college. I don't want to call it an act because I think it's no, who he I really think is. You can call uh, it that. But 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 his style sells well in college. 
Kids eat it up. Uh, they do, and and, and and I think he's back. I mean, it, until he gets beat by Ohio State four more years, and then he'll be gone. <laughs> well, so, you know, they did so. kind of a revenge tour this year and yeah. got revenge on everybody except the yeah. one that matters except, the most. Except the one that will wow. get you run out of town. Exactly. And it only take a couple more years yeah. of that before they will, Harbaugh yeah. or not. That's well, right. This coming up season, I think they're going to play at Michigan this year. So uh, maybe Yeah, but they did that two years ago, and they lost yeah. then, too. Yeah. yeah, but I think maybe this is on the up and up now for them. So Here, Here's what I it. wonder. Harbaugh is making – as much, if not more money at the college level than he would at the NFL mm-hmm. level, I think. Mm-hmm. Probably. Now, I think what it boils down to is, does he want to go to the NFL where he doesn't have to worry about recruiting and babysitting mm-hmm. sometimes? Mm-hmm. Or does he prefer staying at this at the college level, you know, rounding out kids, making them better men, that sort of thing? I think that's what it's going to boil down to, yeah. personally. Well, he's been here this long, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Well, this will be his sixth year coming up, I That's believe. That's amazing so. how t- quickly. Yeah, six and it's years all his guys, you yeah. know, so That's it's, right. it's up to him at this point. Yep. Finally, my last notable here from the top 25, there were six teams from group of five conferences in the final rankings. Wow. Number 11, UCF. Mm-hmm. 18, Fresno State. Mm-hmm. 19, Army, who had a great year. Yeah, they had oh, a really yes. good year. 22, Utah State. 23, Boise State. And 24, Cincinnati. All of those had double digit win totals. Wow. So what do you think? Are they finally giving the group of five some love, or is that not enough love? I think it's headed in the right direction. I mean, I mean yeah. the UCF thing bothers me. They dropped yeah. them all the way to 11, but still. they've been the yeah, head of this yeah, group, that, Yeah, you know. um, But other than that, I think I think that's a pretty good trend. Yeah. What do you think, Russell? Yeah, I think um, uh, a couple of weeks ago you could – or a couple of weeks before um, bowl season, there was really what, like three maybe if you were lucky. So I, that, that shows that they did very well in their bowl games. They must have played some big games to put themselves up into a – Top 25. So, yeah, I think that's good for a group of five in general. I'm, I'm a big fan of a group of five getting them better. So, uh, I, I love it. Me too. Yeah, and I'm hoping that one day they'll expand the playoff to include a group of five automatically, mm-hmm. you know, so yeah. that so that way you can throw it out there of that's right. what would happen. We didn't get our shot. Give that's them right. their shot that's and right. find out what's going on. They're going to get blown out. And so no, no matter who it is, though, right. whether it's UCF yeah. or whether it's that's Fresno right. yeah, or whoever. It could be Boise State. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on here. Let's talk about some teams next year that could vie for a national championship besides Alabama and Clemson because a lot of people expect us to see part five next year, including yeah. this guy. Yeah. And we'll get to that here yeah. in a second. But uh, you guys got any ideas of who you think might be able to compete next year? The Cleveland Browns, if they would drop down to <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was ugly. <laughs> but truth. Um, um, truth welcome in heaven. Yeah. Oklahoma, maybe. I mean, I know, I know Russell's probably going to jump all over Oklahoma, so that's yeah. an easy one. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say UCF. Okay. Yeah. I'm, uh, with the quarterback they got coming in, maybe, ne- maybe next year's the year they make their run and get in there. And, and you man. know what? The thing is – if they go undefeated next year, mm. like how can you make how a could case you not? against a team that regular season at yeah. least has gone undefeated for three right, straight right, years? Right. That is so difficult yeah, to right. do. I don't care what your schedule says. Exactly. Unless you're going out and playing high school games. Anson Bearcats every week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you, if, I if, if you're running that schedule every week, every year and winning it, you got yeah. it at some point. Say, yeah. all right, let's see what they can do. Yeah. And yes, they lost LSU, but that was a really, really good fight for them, and they Blown, I don't say blown, but they beat uh, Auburn the previous year in the bowl yeah. game. So they have beaten two SEC teams, which and they're playing with the big boys. That's so right, that they are. Know? It's I not agree. like they're in a bowl game and they're beating up that's on right. some. Yeah, they're not name. being on little sisters six of the poor. 16. I mean, that's right. And New Year's Six bowls at that, so and it's the bigger bowl. So they're getting the quality wins. They they know how to get it done. It's just I don't know what it is. I don't know if they just don't sell well enough for the committee in terms of money making. I guess that's what it comes down. to. I don't think that's it anymore. Uh, I, I think I, their brand is yeah, out yeah, there. I, I mean, I think people love them enough now where yeah. that would that would that they would pack it out. And believe it or not, last time I checked, Central Florida is the uh, uh, like student population wise is the biggest university in the country. Oh, really? So wow. money's no problem for wow. them. And they're wow. in a recruiting and, hotbed. And, and they will travel if they ever got their real shot. They would travel in droves to yeah. see it. Okay, um, I've got gross. a question I want to throw out. Do y'all think that maybe a uh, Power Five? Dude, you read my mind. I was just going <laughs> to ask that. Do you guys think UCF will end up in the SEC or the ACC or something in you know the oh, next wow. five, six, seven years? I think the ACC would be the better fit. I, I, I think if they went to the ACC, they'd move to the top behind Clemson immediately. Yeah. 
You can make a case. If, uh, if it happened next yeah, year. If, yeah, if they were to come in with this, yeah. with, with the current state of the ACC and where they are talent-wise right now, if they were in ACC next year, yeah. they'd be the second-best team in ACC. The ACC is kind of really top-heavy. Yep, and it's Clemson right. and it's kind of everybody, everybody else. else. So. That's right. mm-hmm. What about you, though, Russell? What do you think? Anybody besides Bama and Clemson to look out for next year? Yeah, obviously I would say Oklahoma. I think having a – you know, they just have stellar season the past couple of years. And even though Hurts is coming in, I don't think he's going to be the only factor that brings that in. Uh they're going to have a stellar offense. I think our defense showed very well against uh, Alabama in their playoff game. So I think they got a strong defense going in. Um, you know, they 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 marked out their uh, loss from last season, so they're they're pretty much on a roll right now in general. And I just think they're going to keep pushing. and They're going to be out there. And having Jalen hurts, will will, will, yeah, oh, yes. cannot hurt. A um, couple of teams that I wrote down here. Uh, Oklahoma is one mm-hmm. of the obvious ones. Ohio State, another one of the yeah, obvious ones. Even, even without Urban there, Ryan right. Day is going to come in oh, and yeah, keep that continuity good. going. So the talent's there. Now, I know they're losing Dwayne Haskins, running back Mike Weber, and wide receiver Paris Campbell, all dynamic playmakers. But running back J.K. Dobbins is a star, and just like we've been using mm-hmm. that word reload, if mm-hmm. anybody does it, Ohio State's That's one right. of those. That's so right. I don't think they'll lose uh, too much. Yep. Let me mark them off. Yep. Georgia. Another team that could vie for a national championship. I'm jumping on that bandwagon. DeAndre uh, Swift, they're a really good running back. I expect a huge season from him coming up. Uh, of course, we know the Bulldogs run, 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 mm-hmm. and run. That's right. They're going to keep that up. Of course, you know you know who will also be in the backfield next year? Zamir White. Oh, that's right. Wow. Zamir White will be that coming up. Right. I mean, I hope he comes back strong. I, I hope really he has a do. Great kid. Great career, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, he and I really admire the University of Georgia for sticking by him. For standing by yeah, that. And yeah, and I, 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 hope he, I hope he rewards him with a great season next year. Because with co- uh, football being a business, they very easily could have said, sorry, yeah, we yeah. don't need you anymore. That's right. And we see that in the NFL all the yeah, time. That's right. So, mm-hmm. Mark George off. It's a God, that was a mere white. A great call. Another one. And this one I went a little bit outside the box, but mm-hmm. not really. Mm-hmm. I've got Oregon down for a national championship <laughs> potential next year. So, here's what I wrote. They weren't horrible this year. Over Washington? They returned quarterback Justin Herbert, mm-hmm. who would have been the number one quarterback in this year's NFL draft. He threw for more than 3,100 yards. The Ducks finished 9-4. and four. Mm-hmm. Not great, but not terrible. That's right. Uh, five-star and number one high school recruit defensive lineman Kayvon Thibodeau is headed oh, to yeah, Eugene. Oh, well, we, yeah, we talked about that one time. And in my opinion, he makes Oregon yeah. the immediate Pac-12 favorite, yeah. unseating Washington and Washington State. Wow. I don't think so. I think uh, Mario Cristobal is following Willie Taggart to follow Chip Kelly. Dynamic offense. They're going to throw it around, spread you out. That's what they yeah. do. They've got a quarterback to do it. And if that defensive end is as good as advertised and they get pressure on the opposing team's quarterback and actually – Yes. Put a defense with it. Yes. I mean, that's that's because we know Oregon can score points. Yeah, Oregon's always this guy brings yeah. the D though. Yeah. Do you know what that big O stands for for Oregon? Zero national champions. Wow. That, so that's, what? That's going to continue. Right. If they, but, if, but, if that's the, but if that's the criteria for everybody being good, I mean, there are a lot of bad teams out there. Exactly. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, I think Oregon. I think I'm it's just, a good call. I think it's a good call. I mean, I'm saying they'll do it, but I'm, that's a pretty good yeah. dark horse pick. I just was looking mm-hmm. through teams and I was like, I mean, it's not like Oregon's never been to the CFP either. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Mariota was there; that's they right. played in it. So, um, of course, none of those guys are still there, but the yeah. program in general that's has right. experience. So let's move from teams and let's talk about some of the top players potentially okay. for 2019. Could be Heisman candidates. Yeah. Matter of fact, let me throw. I'm just gonna. I got some lists here. Okay. Let me throw these names out right. there to you, and you tell me who you think will be the top player out of these guys. Now I'm just gonna be quite honest with you. It's quarterbacks and running backs. Okay. Gotcha. That's it. All right. Justin Fields, Ohio State University. Jacob Eason, Washington. Tua from Bama. Trevor Lawrence from Clemson, Sam Ellinger from Texas. Let's just do the quarterbacks first. Out of those, who you think's the star oh, for next doubt. year? I think it's between Tua and Trevor Lawrence. Uh, surprise, think, surprise. Yeah, I, I think it's Lawrence hands down. I mean, we just talked about how, you talked about how special he was. I mean, I, once in generation talent. I I, I don't even think it's close. I'm just uh, amazed that he personally. wasn't really part of the Heisman contention last season. I don't think he got invited in New York. Trevor? Either. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, I I don't know. I'm not really sure. Getting the job four games in to yeah. the season probably hurt that yeah. hurt, hurt that talk a lot. And he still put yeah. up huge he numbers. Put, he had a, had a great year. Uh, I'm with you though. I'd probably go Trevor Lawrence, but a one A one B with Tua right behind him. You could do a lot worse than Tua. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying Tua's bad. <laughs> no, no, for sure. Uh, he only, I think the only reason he lost it last season, or yeah, uh, because uh, his injury against Georgia. So he can come back and just whip it. And 
Dwayne Haskins for Ohio State mm-hmm. was a guy nobody was really yeah. talking about this time mm-hmm. last year, mm-hmm. and he was one of the Heisman finalists. So yeah. perhaps Justin Fields yeah. could be that same player, a guy that yeah. we're not really talking about yet, mm-hmm. but could have a Heisman-type season. Yeah. And then on the running back side, I've got Najee Harris from Alabama. Mm-hmm. I've got DeAndre Swift, who I mentioned earlier, from Georgia. Mm-hmm. Travis Etienne from Clemson. And Jonathan Taylor from Wisconsin. So out of those guys, who you think uh, got the best shot at winning a Heisman? As far as a running back goes, I don't think you can go wrong with someone from Alabama. So I'm going to go with Najee. Yeah, but he's going to split carries, though. Yeah, but, I mean, Derrick Henry did the same thing. That's true. So did Mark Ingram. Yeah, I, I, I would go almost with the guy from Georgia, except we don't know what does Zamir, what Zamir White's going to play into that. So uh, another thing with splitting the carries, we don't know how that will affect him, but I still think, I still like that kid. Uh, DeAndre Swift, um, there was another running back, his last name's Holyfield, that played for them this year. The real deal. Yeah. Uh, so they split carries. Okay. Now Holyfield's leaving, which leaves Swift as the main guy. We don't know yet where so, she's going to get yeah. from Zamir, like you just said, yeah. so we may have to reserve ourselves yeah. for that one. Damian Harris – is leaving from Alabama. So that'll open up Najee Harris a little bit. But, again, Bama's always got, like, five yeah. running backs. Like that, yeah, five they probably got seven or eight guys on the team we've never heard of that could average six yards a carry. Yeah, and it'll be in the NFL yeah, in three that's years. that's right. Jonathan Taylor, uh, and all these guys are juniors, by the way. Jonathan Taylor from Wisconsin, when he came out as a freshman and a sophomore – or came out as a freshman, he had a great, great season. Mm-hmm. This past year, which surprised me because Wisconsin is known for all sense offensive line play – not so, not so much. It was a down year for him. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with Etn. Uh, this guy. That's what I started This I guy had 25 touchdowns this past season. 25. That's a lot for college football. He's awesome. Yeah, he's really good, and he's got the the, the tools and the players and around can, him. And he can catch the ball. Yeah, um, and there's uh, I can't remember his first name, but Feaster is their other running back. Mm-hmm. But everybody knows Etn is the man. The difference here is. He's going to be the man, and he's not going to be sharing as many Mm -hmm. uh, touches as some of these other guys will. Uh, And then finally, you can include Bama, you can include Clemson, but who do you expect to see in next year's national championship? Notre Dame and you. UC- no, I'm kidding. I'm done with the you Notre, had Dame. Notre Dame. I'm, this done, year, I'm done with the Notre Dame bandwagon <laughs> after that fiasco. So I mean, I'm going to learn the hard way, and I'm going to go with the obvious till somebody knocks them off the pedestal. You know, right. Lab- Alabama, Clemson. All right. Clemson and Georgia. Really? Yep. Wow, I, my mind just exploded. What? <laughs> my mind just exploded. It's going to come down to the SEC championship game. Are we filming? Is this? Wow, you got, yes. got that on tape. <laughs> it's going to come down between Georgia, Alabama, SEC championship game. Again? And it's going to be Georgia that wins this one. Wow. Uh, heard it here first. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna be boring, and yeah. I'm with you until someone says otherwise yeah. and knocks them off. It's yeah. gonna be Clemson, Alabama, That's right. king, again. Of, king of the hill. You can't vote against them. I don't see how you can. So, but Georgia, a good pick and a viable pick, definitely. Won. I think this is. I don't think they'll win the championship. The Clemson's just so much better right now. But uh, this is coming from a guy who didn't even have them winning the ACC when we started. <laughs> I tried to preach to you, Russell. <laughs> This kid took Miami to win wow. the ACC. Ooh, yeah. That's almost as bad as my Notre Dame call, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> almost. Almost. <laughs> no comment from this side. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's going to do it for our college football frenzy. And this may be the last one we do for a little bit of time, obviously, with college football wrapping up. But again, I want to thank Clemson offensive lineman Sean Pollard for uh, giving us some time for an interview. Of course, congratulations once again to him. Russell Parker, Brand Fall, I'm Matt Erlson, and we'll see you right back here next week for all of our RO Sports Shows. Ah!